welcome to the Cultivation Cast by Black Dog LED with Kevin and Noah. In this podcast series, we will cover all things related to indoor cannabis cultivation. Welcome to the Cultivation Cast by Black Dog LED with Kevin and Noah. In this podcast series, we're going to cover all things related to cannabis cultivation. And today, we're going to focus a little bit on the Massachusetts wattage limitations that are being imposed in Massachusetts on commercial cannabis operations that are going to be opening up there under the recreational or adult use laws. So we felt it was worthwhile to talk a little bit about that because the rules are focused 100% on lighting and the amount of wattage, you, the, the number of watts you can bring to a square foot in any canopy on average across the entire grow. So we felt it was worth talking about because that's obviously what we're focused on here at Black Dog LED. And we're just going to dive in and talk about what this means, what the implications are, how you can work within that framework and still manage to get good quality yields and large yields that we would consider commercial level yields uh, for your facilities. And it's important to note that uh, Massachusetts is the first jurisdiction we're aware of that actually puts a restriction on lighting levels, um, and it's kind of odd how they chose to do it with um, watts per square foot of um, lighting specifically, because um, as most commercial growers are aware, at least once you actually get involved in the facility, uh, lighting is not the only electrical use. And in fact, in, in a lot of cases, it's not the largest use of electricity in a grow either. So kind of an odd restriction, uh, that Massachusetts put in place. But one obvious, um, uh, potential solution to being restricted to the number of watts per square foot is simply to increase the amount of canopy space you're growing so that you can, uh, get the yields you want out of an area. But, by increasing your facility size that way uh, dramatically increases your cost, not only upfront, but also ongoing. So, yeah, that's a, an excellent point. There are a few different ways you can skin this cat. And let's let's back up a little bit and talk about what these limitations really are. So the way uh, Massachusetts is configured is they have seven different tiers of licenses and they re- they refer strictly to the square footage of canopy that you're allowed to have in your facility. So the first two tiers are 10,000 square feet or under, and those are going to be allowed to have up to 50 watts per square foot of lighting power per for the entire canopy on average. Now, our interpretation of those laws is that you can, if you use less in veg, you can use that excess and move that over into flower. So that does help. So for those tiers at 50 watts a square foot, you can still get by with traditional old school type HID or or CMH lighting. Um, But when we get above 10,000 square feet, they're dropping that average down to 36 watts a square foot. Now we really need to be concerned about using our lighting as efficiently as possible, getting good uh, fixtures in there that can actually bring yields with that limitation. So with 36 watts a square foot in mind, you know, we had taken a, a pencil to paper and we had thrown together our own just idea just to see how it would shake out, what we could build with the veg space and flower and how we could balance that out using the software we have. And where did we end up, Kevin, with the um, the wattage for that room? So, uh, yes, with by actually running at lower wattage densities in um, vegetative growth, we were able to actually get about 43, close to 44 watts per square foot in flowering and uh, be able to run a, a flowering room with that density uh, while still providing enough veg space and enough veg light to actually be able to fill that area with plants every time you need to uh, fill the room up again. So, and what Kevin's talking about there is the workflow, and that is critical, and that's something that you should be looking at when considering your entire operation and how you're going to work with these wattages, because it's not just a question of, great, I need to turn out flowers, I can just look at my flower room, and that's all I need to think about. There's a lot more to think about, obviously, for commercial operation. And so you need to be able to quickly grow veg plants and keep your flow going. So the minute your flower room is empty, you have those plants to bring in afterwards. And as Kevin was pointing out, that is key. And you can't just steal all of your wattage from, from veg, throw it in flower. And now you have no way to get plants into your flower area in an effective, cost-effective, timely way. And it also does you no know, good to make a oversized vegetative area to help drag the average down because then you're just wasting square footage uh, that you don't need. <clears throat> That's a great point. As Kevin said before, you can, everyone might be tempted to quickly say, well, let's just throw a bigger hammer at this problem. You know, I'm, I'm limited to how much wattage I can have. So what, and I was going to, you know, build a 50,000 square foot facility. Great. Now I'll build a 75,000 square foot facility and then get, I can get the same production I was going to get before out of the 50,000 square foot. The challenge with that, that now you got to take the pen to paper and say, okay, 
You got a hard cost associated with every square foot you build out. Drywall, even if you're not putting much in there, you still got the drywall. You've got the development costs of that square footage. You've got the equipment. You got ducting, cooling. You got all the HVAC. You've got to put more fixtures now if you're doing that also. So now you start to add all these up, and that's just your startup costs. Now you've also got the ongoing operational costs associated with that additional square footage, such as the facilities management. You've got to keep it cool. You've got to do everything. You've got to have the labor. That's another cost. All these additional costs start to pile up on this larger, arguably less efficient grow space that you're building larger. So the goal is to keep our production up at normal commercial levels while working within this framework. And so if we look at that, maybe building a giant facility isn't the best way to go. Maybe it's better to try and get your efficiencies up. So that's where potentially, obviously, we're focused on light for this particular law with Massachusetts. So that's where obviously LED can come into play. And we feel with this... Um, as, as Kevin described, we kind of took pencil to paper and came up with a, what we think is a, a real world scenario. And we've set up a grow with that um, to do a quick test run at that wattage and really see what the Massachusetts wattage limitations can do with our LED grow lights. And the good news is we've grown with um, similar wattage uh, per square foot before. So we kind of know what to expect and we know that it's going to come out well, but uh, it's always nice to do a, a bit of a demonstration grow on a slightly larger scale to really show what can be done while still staying within the framework of the Massachusetts regulations. One of the, I mean, as Noah had mentioned, um, LEDs can be more efficient and therefore get you more light per watt, uh, meaning that your wattage per square foot, uh, you can get more light per square foot with LEDs than you can with traditional HPS lighting or ceramic metal halide. But it's important also to note that uh, there's other efficiencies you can gain by playing around with the spectrum of light rather than just throwing a bunch of uh, white light at the plants. If you actually control the spectrum and have the appropriate ratios of red and blue in there, you can actually make your plants more compact, which means you can get more plants per square foot, which means you get a higher yield per square foot, even with the uh, same wattage. And then in addition, if you throw in higher energy light, such as ultraviolet, which we have in our Phytomax 2 phytogenesis spectrum, then that increases canopy penetration, meaning you can get a thicker canopy, also getting you more uh, yield per square foot that way by growing a thicker, denser canopy. Yeah, Kevin's talking about yield per square foot, and we are finding that's a more and more common metric we're running into. And we, we actually like it as a metric because it's, it's something that's measurable. It's, it's comparable between grow to grow. And so the numbers, you know, that we've heard thrown around, and, and, and we all know this industry, it's a little under the table, a little bit not exact. We, we wish we had better data sometimes. But the numbers we hear thrown around kind of on average is about 40 to 45 grams a square foot commercially is a, is a good average across the industry. Now, We've done a lot of work with uh, the guys out of Denver we're friends with, a uh, 3 Alight group. Uh, Medicine Man Technologies is the main consulting arm, but the uh, 3 Alight crew and the Success Nutrients guys, we've worked with them and visited more than one of their facilities and seen their production, and they are getting up to 140 to 150 grams a square foot, and they've got their costs locked down very low as well. But so what we do know is that there's this huge variation. We've got maybe 40 to 50 grams a square foot on average, and we got these guys that are hitting that out of the ballpark at 150, you know, three times that uh, per square foot. So the goal is to get your yield per square foot, at least in that industry standard, kind of get up into the 40 to 50 grams a square foot while still maintaining this wattage. And that's what we're really curious to see out of our test, um, if that's going to hold true. As Kevin said, we've run this kind of wattage density, but we're doing a slightly more commercial vibe grow with multiple fixtures over an area cutting down the wattage per the Massachusetts requirements to really see where we end up. So the goal again with that test, when we release the data and we'll do another, another update on that, um, we, our goal is to still get those yields per square foot with that wattage. You think we'll hit that Kevin and that grow? Oh yeah. We should get well over 50 grams a square foot. That's what I like to hear. All right. So other than um, spectrum, um, the, the obvious advantage of this lower wattage is everyone's going to install a little bit less air conditioning out there in Massachusetts. As, as Kevin was saying, in Colorado, we know that from talking to Excel Energy, not some grower, but the actual power company that controls all of Denver pretty much, 
um, they say, what is it per to turn on a thousand is a thousand fifty watts, but to cool it is. They're saying it takes about 1.3 times as much power to run your average cooling system for the facilities here in Colorado. So it takes about 1300 watts of cooling just to make up for a 1050 watt high pressure sodium fixture. So, yeah, when you when you start to look at those numbers, this will do a lot to help with the Massachusetts power grid. Uh, although, uh, as we've talked about, if people just build larger facilities and fill them up at a lower wattage density, they're going to end up with the same impact on the power grid that they were trying to avoid anyway. So it will be also fun to watch and see how this law plays out and how it really works out. Massachusetts being the first to try this. We do have some jurisdictions in Colorado that outlawed uh, anything, any type of HPS bulbs for safety concerns and things along those lines um, here in Colorado. So those are limited to, I think, uh, just T5s and LED uh, for those counties or cities where they're doing that. But Massachusetts is the first to implement a commercial law, as Kevin said earlier. So it'll be fun to see how it plays out long term, if they repeal the law or change it or adapt it. Uh, we kind of believe that it should should have been more of a holistic approach, looking at the whole facility and saying, look, here's you have a thousand, uh, 50,000 square foot canopy facility. You get 100 watts per square foot total or something like that for cooling and for ele- for lighting and all that stuff. So it would be a little more of a holistic approach, really looking at the whole facility and the impact of the changes you're making in there. Yeah, because one of the things that um, unfortunately just limiting the, the lighting wattage does is besides tying everyone's hands behind their back in terms of yield per square foot. Um, it's not taking into account additional efficiencies that can be gained, for example, uh, with our lights being able to run and actually needing to run 10 degrees warmer and cutting your cooling uh, requirements by about 60 percent, as we've mentioned on previous podcasts. So I mean, we're able to save a lot more electricity with our LEDs uh, than traditional high pressure sodium. But a lot of the savings is actually on the cooling side. Uh, not as much on the lighting side. However, we can still out yield uh, per watt high pressure sodium. On average, we're doing about 25, 26% uh, higher yield per watt than a double ended high pressure sodium. Yeah, on top of that, we're talking about all these yields, but as you're you know fighting to get the most you can out of these lower wattages that you're allowed in Massachusetts, quality is going to be incredibly important because you want to get the most out of every gram that you can pull out of your garden. Yeah, one other thing that um, is important when you're limited on your wattage per square foot is how you actually set up your facility. So a lot of uh, traditional old school growers uh, grow on a bench or fixed aisleways in their room. So they just have their lights hung up over a growing area. They've got fixed aisleways so they can get to the plants and that works, but it, you end up losing a lot of light into the aisleways. And if you're already limited on the wattage per square foot you can use, that becomes very detrimental in terms of lost light that you're using basically to light up aisleways that aren't gaining you anything, uh, aren't growing anything for you. So that's where using a light the room type approach where you're using rolling benches and have no fixed aisleways, just a aisleway that can be created on demand between any set of plants so that you can get to them, access them, take care of them. Uh, but you maximize your uh, square footage that you're actually using in your facility in terms of canopy area, actual canopy area this way. And it also ends up maximizing your utilization of the light as well, because there's only a very small non-fixed aisleway that is uh, being lit up at any given time, which allows you to grow much more uh, even within the wattage restrictions. Yeah, using the light as efficiently as possible is going to be critical in Massachusetts, whether you're looking at HID or HPS, you know, any of that stuff versus LED. So you're looking at different technologies or as Kevin just spoke about, whether you're looking at how you bring that light to bear on your garden, everything's going to matter. Even, you know, white walls, everything will come into play in in terms of really getting the most out of the limited wattage you're allowed in the Massachusetts market. So uh, that covers this topic. Um, Thanks again for joining us and for listening today. We hope you enjoyed the installment, this installment of the Cultivation Cast. If you have any questions about content or have any idea for a future topic, please send an, send an email 
email to podcast at blackdogled.com. And uh, please keep in mind, we're, it does not have to be just LED. It could be anything to do with uh, cannabis cultivation, heck, even just any type of cultivation. You know, we have Kevin, who's an expert across many things other than cannabis, and we are happy to talk about any of those topics. So please feel free to hit us up with your questions, whether it's about cultivation or about a facility setup or operations in a facility or light levels or how to properly hang lights, anything. Um, also, if you would like to learn more about this specific topic on the Massachusetts limitations, we do have a page up specifically for it. It's blackdogled.com slash MA, as in Massachusetts. So please feel free to check out that page. We do have some diagrams showing how the breakdown of the lights, as we discussed at the kind of 42 watts per square foot average uh, for the flower to get us to that 36 watts for facility. You can download that from that link as well. Uh, so please check it out. And enjoy. Have a great day and happy gardening.